Hi, I'm Callum from Time Valley Motorhomes and this is a handover of the Auto Trail Apache 632. So starting we'll walk around on the driver's side of the vehicle first. The first point you get to is your mains connection point. So you get your hookup lead, lift the collar, expose the end, and then what you want to do is you want to slide this blue piece on top of the hookup point on the vehicle. And then when unhooking, you just simply press the left hand blue clip to unhook. But always remember, hook the vehicle up first, then the power source and do it in reverse when unhooking so that you are never exposing yourself to a live lead. Underneath you've got your waste water points. This is anything you put down a plug hole. So showering water, dishes water, hand basin water, all goes into a holding tank. There's a lever on the side where you can open it and drain it off should you need to and you would drive over a grid on the way out of your site called the motorhome service pitch drop your waste always travel with the waste empty because it will just mean that you've got a better payload and in the winter it's very important that you drain it off otherwise it will freeze and it could crack the pipework and the tanks which isn't covered under warranty because it's frost damage so remember drain it off in the winter to be safe with all your other water appliances which I'll show you throughout the handover. Got some storage behind the kitchen unit there. Exterior shower. So you get a bullfinch connection on one end of the hose and on the other end of the hose you get a trigger gun. So as long as the pump is on, you'll be able to turn it from off to hot, to cold, you'll be able to adjust the mixer there and use it, the trigger gun, to hose the dogs off the bikes, the kids or the boots after you've been on the beach. But always make sure that the pump has been on and for hot water you have to have the hot water system on prior for the water to heat otherwise you will just have cold water. Two fridge vents, fresh water intake, so this is where you would fill with fresh water. So by removing the cap, which is lockable by the keys, you put your hose pipe in there and fill it until it overflows or until you know you've got enough water on board, which you can see off the main control panel. It goes up in increments. So carry yourself a hose pipe and some hose pipe ends as it's mostly a brass tap on most sites. And then fill. Once you're happy you've got enough water, you'd stop filling. And then should you ever need to empty the fresh water, so you put it, you fill here, you empty here. So like the waste water, again you drive over a grid on the way out of your site, open it to empty. Make sure it's left open in the winter so no water is in the tank so it doesn't freeze. And the main reason for emptying it would be winterizing, you've taken on contaminated water or you're simply not using the van for a couple of weeks and you don't want the water to go stagnant, you would empty it. You've got your cowl here for your Truma boiler, so that indicates where the boiler is on board. Make sure that's always obstruction free and it isn't blocked. And then in the back, you've got storage, you've got your after bar, your on and winding handles, your carpets, tethering rails if you want to tie anything down. Got some tethering hooks on either side so you can use a bungee or a ratchet strap to tie things down when traveling. At the back of the van, you've got your reverse cameras, high level brake light, spare wheel lifts underneath here. So, with the same key you open the lockers with, you can put it in here, turn it, lift this auto trail barge off, and then there's a big nut that lifts the JRP panel off which behind there is a full-size spare wheel. Same storage in the garage. External gas point, so instead of carrying a separate bottle, you can use the bottle on board. You get your red bullfinch connection, you'll need some gas hosing and some Jubilee clips. The gas hose is orange. Connect your Kadak, your external awning heater or your barbecue and then it'll power from the gas on the vehicle instead of carrying another bottle. 
probably you can set toilet you want to make sure that the blade on the bottom of the toilet is closed which is the grey lever if it was open this cassette wouldn't come out but it's closed so you'll be able to lift the orange handle and slide it out and come free of the vehicle you've got a handle there so you can wheel it to your waste disposal point which is normally beside your toilet block you then remove this cap here Press the orange button and tip it out. Once you've tipped it out, there's normally a tap there, so you'd put some water in, put the cap back on, give it a rinse, give it a shake, rinse it out, tip it out again, and then if you're using a liquid form of chemical, 120 ml of either the blue or the green, straight into the cassette and it's good to go. Or if you are using the tablet form, you put the cassette in completely dry, push it in, Open the blade, flush a pint of water via the electric flush on the toilet into the cassette followed by a tablet which is in the cellophane sachet of either the blue or the green. At the front here you do have your LPG, so liquid petroleum gas, this is your gas locker. You can fit two gas bottles in here, so always run the motor home off propane because that's what it's set up for. To strap the bottles in once they're on board with the straps provided. To get the pigtail on, it's a left hand thread, so opposite threads with it being gas, so a left hand thread, hand tighten, and then you turn on and off from the top of the bottle. Always turn it off when travelling, and then when you do turn it on, you'll need to press the crash valve here, so it indicates this orange sticker here tells you and you'd press the button just to allow the gas into the vehicle otherwise you could go and try and light something on gas and you'd be pulling no gas through so that's why you just need to press this button to allow the crash valve as it's for safety if anything was to happen with this pigtail at the passenger door you've got your diesel which opens with the main ignition key And then you've got your tyre pressures on the passenger door slam panel, so it's five and a half bar, which is 79.5 psi front and back. Your tool kit is underneath the passenger seat, which includes a jackknife brace and a torn iron. This just lifts off this little clip here that you turn, and then this would pull out. And then underneath the floor, you do have a, your engine battery. On the side of the passenger dashboard, you do have your bonnet release. And then underneath the bonnet to the left hand side underneath the driver's steering wheel you have all your fluids so you've got your screen wash this then lifts off and you've got your power steering and radiator coolant your brake fluid your engine oil your engine oil and your dipstick paint cord and then you do have a negative there and then just in this cap here, if you lift that up, so put a key or a screwdriver in there, lift it up, and this will expose the positive terminal which is behind the passenger headlight. And finally, you do have your weight plate, so three and a half ton gross vehicle weight. If you were to put a tow bar on, the max train weight, so that's the motorhome and whatever you're towing, can't exceed 4,750 kilograms. Once inside the vehicle, above the habitation door, you've got the main 12 volt control panel. So if you are hooked up, you'll get mains electric, so you can use any mains appliance, such as a 240 kettle. If not, you will just get 12 volt off your leisure battery. So you've got your master switch, which is in the top left-hand corner, which turns the vehicle on and off. This switch then transfers the power from the leisure battery to the vehicle battery so you would then be running the motorhome off the vehicle battery I wouldn't advise using this because you can flatten the engine battery but this is more for if the leisure battery has gone flat while camping and you just need that little five minutes of charge you can press that but I wouldn't advise using it you've got your pump in the bottom left hand corner 
So make sure you've got enough water on board, which I'll show you how to do in a moment. And then you can turn the pump on to pressurise the outside shower, inside shower, taps, toilet, and so on. And then you've got your owner light, which is the light on the outside of the vehicle, which you can turn on and off via here. So going through the panel, so first of all you get, you get your EC300, which is your power supply unit. If you scroll down, it'll tell you how good your leisure battery is, which is 14 volts, which is good. But obviously that's hooked up, so you want to take the hook about to give a true reading. Vehicle battery, 14.4 volts. Again, we are hooked up, so it is charging. Take that out, you will get to see what the real voltage reading of the batteries are. Fresh water, which is 50% full. So that'll go all the way up to 100. So we've got half a tank of water on board. Your waste is 25% full. So, like I've shown you from outside, you just open that on the way out of your site to get rid of that before traveling. The current ampage currently coming off your leisure battery, which is 0.3 amp. Solar current coming into the leisure battery, which is 0.0, .0 because the hookup takes priority as it's the bigger voltage, so that'll work when you're unhooked. Internal temperature, the tank heaters. So if you want the tank heaters on, you'd only use the tank heaters when it's going to freeze overnight. So if you're in the winter months, and to turn them on, you just pr simply press the middle one, and it'll turn on and off from here. You can set the clock when the times go back and forward by pressing the middle one again and using the up and down arrows to change the time. You can set an alarm should you need to again by using these three. If you are wanting to catch a ferry or need to be up, this control panel will start bleeping at that time. And then you would set the alarm to on. And then you've got event timers which you can set. And then you're back to the start. And to operate your Truma Digital Combi heating and hot water panel. So if you if press and hold, it'll, you'll give a power and you'll get a screen like this and then you enter if you just press on here you've got settings so you've got a van with the thermometer in this is the temperature of the van so you can have it all the way to off should you not want heating or all the way to 30 degrees should it be cold so for this we'll just say 21 degrees once you're happy with it just press on the wheel and that presets it moving along you've got your water so this is how hot you want your water so you're going to have it on off if there's no water in the system eco hot or boost, boost prioritizes the water from the heating so we'll just say hot and then this is the energy source moving on so you've got electric on 2 kilowatts which you'd use if you've paid your site fees you don't want to waste your gas you've got electric on 1 kilowatt should you be on a small SEL site which doesn't have a lot of electricity you may have to use 1 kilowatt of electric you've got a mixture of gas and 2 kilowatts of electric which you'd use in the winter to heat the van or the water um, quicker you've got a mixture of one kilowatt and gas or you've got gas on its own should you be well camping and not hooked up you'd have to use this but for this we'll say electric on two press you've got your fan speed so eco uses a this is a 12 volt fan so eco uses a little bit less of your 12 volt and high it'll use a lot more so if you're well coming obviously you want to pro you want to prioritize what you're using so you'd have to put it on eco um, to save a bit of your 12 volt leisure battery below you've got your timer which you can set but you can set your timers on here as well for the um, this heating system you've got your clock so you can this is just a clock that displays on the on the display panel there and you've got a spanner there so should your heating fail you can go all the way down to reset and hold, press and hold and reset your boiler underneath the bed at the back through the two access doors in the garage located on your left hand side is your boiler so your boiler heats the vehicle and heats the water so it has a 10 litre water container within it in the winter months it's very important that you drain off that 10 litre water container otherwise it will freeze it will crack the cylinder and it isn't covered under warranty so to do so you need to find your winter 
drain down valve, which is this one here, this little yellow toggle. When it's lying down either side, it's holding 10 litres of water. What you need to do is you need to stand it up, like so. That 10 litres of water will drain directly out underneath the van. Leave it stood up during the time you've got the vehicle winterised and stood up in the winter months not being used. So you'd open this one, you'd open your fresh and you'd open your waste from outside. You would then want to open all your taps within the vehicle so that any water that's in the pipes gets a chance to come out and it stops any air locks. And then when you are ready to use the van again, you'd shut the waste, you'd shut the fresh, you'd shut the boiler, shut all the taps first. Then get a hose pipe and fill the fresh water back up. Once that's full, you would come in and you put the pump on. You'd go at the cold side of the tap first. You'll get automatic cold water through because it's just pulling it from the main tank to the pump, to the tap. Then when you go at the hot side, it's drawn it from the main tank via the pump into the boiler and filling the 10 litres up. So it'll cough, splutter, make all sorts of noises until you get a free flow of water from the hot side of the tap. Start off with the kitchen, then do the shower and the hand basin. But once you've done one, the others follow very quickly and the system will be primed. But remember, you're waiting for your free flow of water from the tap so don't be alarmed if it's coughing and spluttering and making all sorts of noises because it's just pushing the air out of the boiler. In the washroom, to operate the toilet, make sure the pump is on first of all. And then this little blue button here is your electric flush, so you just press that. The fan will kick in first, so to get rid of the fan, when it's flashing it's on, press it until it goes static. And then the fan is off. Press the blue button and you'll get your fresh water flush. So flush the toilet first to lubricate the seal on the blade. And then you would open the toilet, which is this grey lever here, which is called your blade, your slide. Slide that along. Use the toilet with the blade open. Flush after use and then close. Because this is a fresh water flush, it doesn't take the pink liquid, but if you do get the, the two packs of liquid, so you get the blue and you get the pink, instead of wasting the pink, what you can do is you can put it into a spray bottle and you can spray the bowl before you flush, and then shut the blade, and it'll clean the bowl and leave a nice fragrant smell. And then when you get a three green lights underneath the cassette, it's time to get the cassette out to the outside of the vehicle and take it to be emptied. Toilet cabinet here, toilet cabinet underneath your sink. Shower, so just magnetic doors and then like I was saying about winterizing, take the head of the shower off the hose and allow the hose to lie in the tray with the mixer tap open and then you've got a handy towel rail there which doubles up if you've been out caught in the rain walking the dogs or on a walk you can hang your coat and your wet items up there and they'll drip dry and then above you do have a skylight which is the same as the one above the back bed <coughs> so push the button Pull the bar down, slide along, or you can put it into the grooves. Should it be a nice day and you want a nice bit of ventilation, you do have a blackout blind and a fly screen. But you will want to make sure that the bar is above the button and the button's popped out, which indicates that the skylight is securely closed and that they're all closed before you start travelling. Should I operate the fridge? You turn on and off here by just pressing and holding. As you can see, it's gone off. And then press again, and it'll come back on. So this is a three-way fridge. So at the moment, you've got the picture of the plug, which indicates 240 hookup, which means it'll work as a 240 household fridge, same as the one in the house. 
So you would use this if you are pre-chilling at home or if you were on site as you wouldn't want to waste your gas. Then it changed sources so if you did go while camping and you had no 240 volt hookup you press the square button here which is the grey button wait until they start flashing and then use the arrows left and right so if we go right you go to the gas at the far end you would press enter this is your temperature so you can go up and down with the arrows and then you would press enter and then it would self ignite on gas if you've pre-chilled it at home and you're going from home with a full fridge of shopping or you're moving from site to site you do have the option of the 12 volt so if you press again and move one to the left from the gas you get the battery which is the engine alternator feed direct from the engine when it's running to the fridge and what that'll do is it'll keep it nice and chilled so it won't make it go any warmer but it won't make it go any cooler it'll turn it into a big cool box so it does need to be chilled beforehand so i'd normally put the fridge on two days before you go away and then the night before you'd put your shopping in you'd allow that to chill and then you would put onto the battery setting it'll fail and bleep until you start the engine and then it'll start getting a feed which indicates that it's working and then finally with the fridge, once you have finished using it for the season and you're doing your winterization with the water, it's very important that you drain, clean the fridge out, you get all your items out, you give it a wipe down and then the last thing you want to do is close the door. Because closing the door will allow mould to form and nasty smells in the vehicle. So if you leave the door open like so, or you can, you can leave it like that, there's no harm. Or you can put the blue clip into the middle and just rest the door up against it. It'll stop the door from shutting on itself. In the kitchen you've got three gas burners, one electric hot plate at the back. Which is this one which will get you the red light which is only when you are hooked up that will work because it's 240. Otherwise you will have gas. And as you can see, you've got three lit gas rings. You would allow them to cool down before you put the cooker hood down. Otherwise, there is a chance you could smash the glass and shatter with the heat. So do allow them to cool before you put them down. Same with the hot plate. And then underneath. Grill. You have to hold this one in until Hello. the thermocouple does get warm. Hello? And then underneath. Who is it? You could. Oh, it's David. David, I can hardly hear you. The oven. I don't know. David, I'll bring you back. I'm in the motor home with a customer. You may want to take the grill pan and oven shelf out when travelling or wrap them up as it can be a cause of rattling when on the road and then underneath you do have your water pump at the back your red gas taps along the left hand side which are mainly for when the vehicle is habitation serviced. Any problems with gas, turn the bottle off just to be safe. But you can isolate each appliance from here. But this is mainly for when it is habitation serviced annually. They will check each appliance is working to the correct gas standards. And then you do have your pl plug there, which is for your electric hot plate. So any problems with the hot plate, you can unplug and switch the plug off. For the microwave above, so press eco and it will work on mains electric as it's an 800 watt microwave. And pressing this panel below is where chopping board slash sink draining board lives when travelling. So that just slides down there. A 
cutlery drawer, drainer which just sits on the top and some storage I'm just showing that your water pump's working and that is your hot water working as you can see the steam coming off the water so it's very hot 240 plug when hooked up this will work lights for the kitchen area and then by pressing this little button here which is the dimmer switch it turns off and on the lounge lights underneath the cabinets and then if you press and hold it will dim them so you can dim the light should it be too bright on an evening like so all your little readers are individually switched so there's four of those in the lounge as well in the overhead cab cupboard above the passenger seat or should I say driver seat even you do have your EC500 power supply unit so this black button here is your system shutdown button so in the winter if you did want to isolate the leisure battery you press this button here and what that will do is it will stop any power drain and then you've got duplicated what's on the control panel here so on off, pump, on light, power transfer button all your 12 volt fuses which are listed up here what they do so it would be a good idea to carry some spare blade fuses and then this side you do have your RCD and your MCBs on mains electric so if you trip the vehicle out try here before you try your main site space heater and water heater so these just push in so just make sure that you haven't knocked those if you can't get the water heater or space heater to work and same with the charger but just leave them pushed in forget about them you don't need to really touch these you do have your build number which is unique to each vehicle so if you ever need parts from auto trail quote that to them or an auto trail dealer and they'll get the best parts which are suited to this vehicle and then you do have a single usb socket just in the right hand corner behind the driver's seat in the lounge sofa underneath it you do have the location of your leisure battery so your leisure battery lives underneath here and you do have your 20 amp amp main battery fuse obviously this is where you hook up and the hookup comes in and then the last owner has fitted a 1500 watt power pure sin wave inverter so it will in it will change and convert 12 volt to mains power so just on this side here at the top corner you do have an on off button so you can turn that on if you need it but remember don't turn it on when you're hooked up because it will blow and melt wires because you're already getting 200 and 240 volt power into the vehicle you don't want to put another 1500 through that as you can risk damaging the electrics in the van so now in the cab to the right of the driver you do have your handbrake and then on the door you've got your electric driver and passenger windows and electric mirrors so you would adjust which mirror you want from here and you've got two on each side the top and the blind spot and then the black the driver and passenger door windows out on an evening pinch and slide your Emma's car blinds and you'll be able to black them out and then you've got the same on the windscreen so pinch and slide they'll just clip together on a magnetic strip and then coming down beside the driver's side you've got your headlight adjustment and your rear fog lights you wipe a stalk with your trip computer which goes through the screen here tell your range your trip distance your average consumption your instant consumption your average speed your traveling time and then you've got trip a and trip b all your steering wheel controls which work the radio your headlights and indicators and you've got off on the top you've got your cruise control where you just push up once you get to the desired speed push up the speed up pull down the store down cancel on the store cancel on the brake resume on the end of the stalk 
and then at the bottom you've got going up slowly you've got your speed limiter pushing up a little bit harder goes up in fives on the speed limiter and then you've got the kick down function so you can throw the accelerator to override the speed limit should you need to for emergencies so the speed limit will be there lightly on the throttle floor it and it'll override the limiter six speed manual gearbox with lifting the collar in reverse but you've always got the camera on on the back so it's, no matter if you're in first or you're in sixth that's always on traction control Hill descent control is pretty much useless on a manual. Hazards locks the cab on an evening, and you've got your heated mirrors. USB and 12 volt for charging purposes only. You've got an auxiliary and a USB there for charging through the head unit. Temperature on the outside ring. Fan speed must be on at least one or more for the aircon to work, which is this button here. And then on the outside ring on this side, you've got your distribution. And then on the inside, you've got your circulation, whether you're bringing fresh air in or you're recirculating air. Fiat head unit. FM AM radio. You can press one to three to save, or you can press all and you can save 12 of your favorite FM channels. Media is obviously CD, Bluetooth audio, a USB or auxiliary. Navigation. So navigate to, put your address in there. So you can punch in the postcode. If you ever take it abroad, you just need to click on that, in, that UK flag and put it to the country you're going in and you can put your French coordinates or your Spanish coordinates in there. If you're going to set the home function up, don't set it to your house, set it to the street before or just a location where you can drive to and then you know the distance from there to the house, like the back of your hand, because you wouldn't want to drive, put your postcode in there and then someone to nick your motor home to know where you live. Connect your phone, you press phone, settings, add device. Find you connect on your phone, make sure the pins match, press pair on here, pair on your phone, then it'll ask you if you want to download your phone book, press allow and it'll sync your contacts into here so you can scroll through them and then ring whoever you need to. You can go to more and you can look at the trips on here instead of through the screen should you wish. You've got a compass and you've got the outside temperature and a clock. And then you turn on and off here, volume, and you've got settings in the top right. Glove box, heated and cooled glove box by the air conditioning. So if you wanted to keep small bottles of water, sweets, chocolate in there with the aircon on, they'll stay lovely and cold when you're on the road.